Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about why I personally choose to use XUnit to write my test in .NET instead of NUnit. Now, I want to preface this by saying that everything in this video doesn't really matter. You do you, this is just my reasoning for choosing one over the other. So the next time someone asks me why I choose XUnit over NUnit, I can just link to this video and they can have my opinion. Of course, you can use that opinion to make your own opinion, but you can also use this opinion to say, well, all that doesn't really matter to me. I'm going to stick with NUnit. Everyone knows you should not be using MS Test though. Like, come on, use something else. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. And for more training, check out my courses on dometrain.com. All right, let me show you what I have here. I have a simple example library, class library type of project over here. And the only thing it has is this example service. Now, this is sort of a fake service. We're just going to use this to demonstrate my point in terms of why I'm using one library over the other. And then I have two test projects here, one using NUnit, one using XUnit. And I'm going to write the same types of tests with the two libraries. Now, the first thing I want to say is that XUnit is actually more popular than NUnit. It has more installs, more downloads, and you will see it more out there. You would normally see NUnit in more legacy or old projects. This doesn't necessarily mean something. The new projects still use NUnit to this day, but XUnit was sort of made to be the evolution of NUnit with all the knowledge gained by building a unit taken into account and making X unit to be effectively a better N unit. Keep that in mind. And the reasons behind why I choose X unit over N unit have to do with some decisions made on the defaults of both libraries, because technically both libraries can do effectively the same thing. They're not that different that X unit has something that N unit doesn't and vice versa. However, the default experience and the ideology behind how these libraries are built are vastly different and that for me is what makes me choose X unit over N unit. So let's say I want to write a test for this example service. I'm going to use my typical naming convention and say example service tests over here. And if I'm using N unit, the first thing I need to say is mark this class as a test fixture. I don't really need to do this nowadays. I can technically not have it and it will still work. But if you want to use, I think, test cases, then you still have to have it. And I'm going to create my example service over here, my system under test, the thing I'm going to be writing tests for. And to write a test, I just say, hey, here's a test and then public void. And all I want to check is that the GUID is not empty by default. So to write a test that does that, I can say that var id equals uh, sut dot id. And then to assert both any unit and next unit have their own assert class. So I can say assert that the ID is not equal to, so it has a sort of fluently reading experience, GUID.empty. Just this is a very simple test. So if I go ahead and I just run this, you're going to see in the console that the test is passing. Now, what I'm going to do is duplicate this test. So I'm going to say GUID is not empty and then two. And I'm going to run them quickly just to quickly show you that, yes, they're both passing. But what I'm also going to do is after they pass, I'm also going to say test context dot out dot write line. And I'm going to write the ID in both cases. So remember, we initialize the system under test over here as a private read only field. And then we're going to run two tests and print it. So let's go ahead and run all the tests and see what happens. So as you're going to see over here, we are going to get this ID over here, the 828 and so on. And then the same exact ID for the second test, that is in any unit. That is because by default in any unit, the class of the test, the fixture, the test fixture will be initialized once for all the tests. So anything you initialize on the sort of class global level will be reused for all of your tests. And that is something I really, really, really don't like as a default decision. Let's see how you can do the exact same thing in X unit. I'm going to copy the exact same class over here and I'm going to remove this test fixture because you don't actually need it. Fix the namespace. Instead of test, X unit has the concept of a fact to represent a test like this. And then assertion is a bit different. We're going to say assert not equal. And then the expected, which is the good empty. And then the ID, which is the ID. So same thing over here as well. And then to write to the console, what you have to do is inject the test output helper, which is a sort of a special type of class and or interface. And you can use the output dot write line method. And I'm going to say to string and Printed. Here we go. So now if I run the exact same test that I had in any unit, then watch what happens. I have FA5 here good, but then here I have 194. That is because by default in X unit, one class is initialized for each test that you run. So anything you have here, any setup that you have in this class at a global level will be initialized once per test. And this 
ultimately leads to better tests because it's less likely to have clashing between states carried over from previous tests. Now, in both cases, this is behavior you can change. However, having the default be sort of an independent approach is way, way better because it means you don't have to add code to add this behavior. It's just it's the default behavior and that's it. And it's way more likely to be the thing you want to do anyway. That is because ultimately you're going to have less chance of having flaky tests. How many of you have added a test in any unit and then that test being added have caused another one to fail suddenly because some state that this test is dealing with has a knock-on effect on that other test? It is a very common scenario in any unit. I had this happen many, many times. And yes, it is sort of an indication of bad tests in the first place because if that's really a problem, then initialize this SUT in the test itself. But then the problem is that your tests become bigger. So the approach that X unit is choosing, in my opinion, is a better developer experience. The other thing that I really, really like is that XUnit is trying to use C-sharp constructs to represent ideas that we would usually have in tests. For example, setup and cleanup or tear down. So if I want to do something before every test in any unit, what I would do is I would have a setup attribute in a method. So I would say public void setup over here. And here, let's just print something in the console. So let's say setup over here. And if I want to have something happen after each test, I would have sort of a tear down or a cleanup. So I'm going to say tear down over here and then tear down. And if I go ahead and I run this test now, watch what happens in the console. I have setup, the ID and tear down and the same thing here. And there's nothing really fundamentally wrong with this approach. However, I do believe X unit approach is better because it is using knowledge you know from using C sharp. So if you want to have setup in X unit per test, all you need to do is put it in the constructor because you have one class per test. So anything here by default will happen once per test. So all I want to say is output and then setup over here. Here we go. And how would you do cleanup? Well, what's something that happens once the class is disposed? Well, the dispose method. So you're going to add the I disposable interface over here and add the missing method, the dispose. And that is your cleanup. And that is it. Clean up over here. I'm going to go ahead, run this test, and it's all very expected. It all makes so much sense. And you have set up here and clean up in both tests. And by the way, for those wondering, if you want to do this in an async fashion, you can say I async lifetime instead, and that will add a couple of methods, the initialize async and dispose async methods that will allow you to do asynchronous cleanup and teardown. Now, of course, you could always sort of recreate the behavior that any unit has in next unit. It's very easy, and you can do it with a couple of ways. You can have cross test class uh, consistency between the state that's being transferred from one test to the other, or you can have an I class feature, which doesn't necessarily mean that every test in here will run as part of the same class, but it actually means you can have an object here as a generic T type parameter that is transferred between every test. So for example, if my state is the example service, I can just pass it here. And instead of initializing it, say, hey, comment this out, initialize or inject from the constructor. And then if I go ahead and I run them, you're going to see that the IDs are going to be the same in both cases, because now the state is being transferred because this object is initialized in a special way just once. Now, you don't have to use the SUT as the state here. You can actually create an umbrella test context object and have the SUT in there and a bunch of other stuff you want to maintain. That is actually way more common in integration testing where the setup is more complicated. For example, in my testing works that I run in many conferences, link in the description below, you're going to see that we are creating creating a customer API factory, and we maintain a lot of state for database connections, GitHub API servers, um, containers, and so on. And that is transferred from test to test, even between multiple test classes. And XUnit makes that very, very easy. I know this may sound very simplistic, but honestly, for me, that makes a really, really, really huge difference. And I really like the approach that XUnit is taking. If I could have one thing from any unit, that would be the assert dot pass method. Any unit has sort of a way to force a test to pass, which can be very handy when you're doing some very fancy dynamic stuff where you can still have an exception sort of thrown, but you want to have the test ultimately pass in the end. I had this scenario once in the past and I could only do this with any unit. And as far as I know, X unit doesn't have anything like this. But if you think it does, then please leave a comment down below and let me know. But what do you think? Do you use X unit or any unit or MS test? I don't know. Leave a comment down below letting me know why you choose one over the other. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.